Hello again, all you awesome RVers out there. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, today, as promised, we are going to do 50 amp transfer switch overview. This is not a review. Um, it's not how to install them, how to take them out, none of that stuff. But hopefully I can give you some insight on how they work, what they do, uh, what the uh, parts are, identify the parts, and just give you an overall on your 50 amp transfer switch. Now this is something from a technician standpoint that you would be going to if your customer complained of not receiving power, maybe from their shore or their generator or perhaps either one. It's very common that these do wear out. They're wearable, consumable parts. Um, so we'll open it up, take a look at the interior, talk about how it's set up, how it works, and I hope it helps, helps some folks out understanding what their 50 amp transfer switch is. So get right down to it. This particular one is a Southwire Surge Guard. It's model 41260, as you can see there. It is rated for 50 amp service at 60 hertz because I'm in America. Now let's just look at the outside here. It's basically a black plastic box. Nothing fancy here. There's gonna be one opening here for our earth ground, which would be a frame ground on your RV. And we'll talk about that when we open it up. And then we have two little lights here. There, whoop, I'm sorry about that. They're gonna tell us service is required if these lights are illuminated. Um, you could have one red light or you could have two. Now this particular unit has gone bad. It's about eight years old, so it had a pretty good life. Nothing bad to say about the Southwire Surge Guard. It's an excellent transfer switch. So I'll open it up, tell you what went wrong with it, and then we'll talk about how it's set up. First thing I wanna do is flip over the lid See if I can't get the uh, schematic in focus here. I'm trying hard, I promise. Let's see if we can get it away from that light overhead. All right, so a couple things I wanna look at specifically is these are our contactors, which we'll see them in a minute. And then it tells you where to put your shore input, where to put your line side of the generator coming in, and then also indicates what location the output for your load, which would be your breaker box goes. So that's gonna be an indication of coming out of the top of this contactor here. So make sure if you're wiring one of these, you pay very close attention to that. You don't wanna get anything backward. And here we are. So basic components, if we take a look, we've got some PCBs or printed circuit boards inside. A lot of relays on this one here. And then we have our 120-240 contactors. You can see they're jumpered here. No jumpers up here, but we do have our low voltage wiring going to the contact sets. Now what that does, when I plug this RV in, or I start my generator, these boards, particularly this one, determines that I have correct polarity, that I don't have a brownout situation, which would be low voltage. Anything under 108 volts would mean that these relays will not engage and pull these contactors in. So that, that is a, uh, there are some low voltage transformers that are gonna transform 12 volt and tell this contactor whether the electromagnet should pull this in or release it. These are spring loaded. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Contactors, an electromagnet overcomes the spring and pulls this in, which allows the power to pass from these legs to these legs and then eventually out to our load, which is our breaker box. So basically the configuration we saw on the schematic, we would have our shore power coming in and we would have black and red on the outside of the contactor, line one, line three, our neutral in the center, which is our white wire, and then we would have our ground on this ground bust right here. Sound like I said bust, but I said bus. And this is where that frame ground is going to come through on this particular screw right here on this model. But we are going to share this ground bus here with the generator input and the shore input. And then we'll use this bus right here for our output going to our load, which is our breaker box once again. And then you'll notice this green wire is a jumper. It actually travels under this PCB and comes over. So these buses are essentially one ground bus. They all share that frame ground or earth ground, if you will. So that being said, our shoreline comes in, remember, uh, red, black, white. So 120 hot, 120 hot, neutral. 
Our generator is going to come through here. 120 hot, 120 hot, neutral. And then our both our grounds will go to this bus. And then over here on our output side, we're going to take the lead that goes to our load, which is our breaker box. And we're going to hook it to this particular contactor on the other side of the generator with a red hot, 120 hot, black hot, 120 hot, and a neutral here. So when either one of these contactors pulls in, you can see it has jumpers. That output is going to be on the top of this particular contactor. So what happened to this particular transfer switch, it looks brand new. It looks like it's in great shape, but if you stuck your nose down in here, here, I'll get you in and took a sniff right about there. You are definitely going to smell some burnt electrical smell. Although it's not physically visible, it is present and I believe it's internal in this contactor. So what the customer complaint was is that they had full power, no issues on shore power, which is this contactor. But when they try to start their generator and run their air conditioner to go down the road, they got no power for the generator. So we did check the output of the generator and the circuit breaker to make sure that it was applying power to the bottom of this contactor. It was. I had 109 volts just over the threshold of a brownout on each leg, but it was not passing through and coming through my neutral and my hots here to go out to our load at the breaker box. So when the shore power is plugged in, just an explanation of how it works, this circuit board is going to determine that we have good polarity, we have a ground, we have a neutral, we have the correct voltage. At that time, it will allow a relay to engage through these low voltage wires here on the contact. And it will allow this electromagnet to suck this contactor in, which will make contact between those posts and these posts. It will jump her over to the top of the generator contactor and out to our load. Now, the thing I find that most people are surprised about is that the generator is the primary and the shore power is the secondary. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is if you are plugged in and this contactor is pulled in and providing your load, your breaker box with power, if you start the generator, that circuit board will open this contactor and close this contactor almost instantaneously. There is a millisecond delay, but it is almost unnoticeable. And you can usually hear them thump. So even though you're plugged in, this contactor will open and your shore power will still be present on this side, but no longer on this side. The generator incoming power here will take over and provide that load out to your breaker box. So primary, whether you're plugged into shore power or not, the generator will always be your power source if it is running and putting out power. That's important to know. A lot of people get confused about that. Last 21 years I've been doing this, I have to answer that question a lot. It is the primary. In fact, some people have even argued with me, but you know, the physical behavior of this device will prove it pretty simply. So if you're trying to diagnose one of these, just a quick rundown, first of all, Please be careful. Please use a UL rated voltage meter. Exercise extreme caution. There is high voltage in here and you could get shocked, get very hurt or die. But if you're careful, you can test your inputs and your outputs. You can just visually verify without touching anything that this pulls in when your shore cable is plugged in. This pulls in when your generator's pulled in or running, excuse me, and putting out power. And that the auto changeover functions properly when you start your generator while plugged in. This should pop up, this should pop down. Which it doesn't feel very good and that's why it's broken. I think I've covered just about everything. The service lights can indicate many things. Um, you would need to take it to a service center. I'm not going to get into how to test the low voltage, the PCBs, or anything beyond testing power in and out. Um, it gets a little bit more advanced after that. And quite frankly, if this circuit board went out, or this circuit board went out, or a contactor even, they're, they're riveted in, they're permanent installations, there's no excuse to be trying to swap these out. I know some people think they should, because they're on a budget, they don't want to spend a bunch of money. This transfer switch is like, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. It's not that expensive, just replace the whole thing. Because if this one failed, this one's probably on its way out too. And if one of these circuit board failed, why wouldn't you just replace the whole thing so you know every single component is brand new? 
Hope this helped out. If you have any questions about transfer switches, including 30 amp, it's identical to this, only on a smaller scale. Some come with surge protection, some don't. But if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me that perhaps I can answer for you and get you back up and running, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If you like my videos, if they help you out, please help me out. Hit that like button and subscribe and tell your friends that RV. I'm going to have hundreds of videos coming out to help you guys take care of your RVs over the long term. Thanks again for watching. I very much appreciate it. Y'all take care until the next video. Bye.